So first of all, let me let you all know that um, Les and I have got known each other for quite a long period of time. Um, he is energetically incredible. So I think his uh, ability to have more time is not only based on what he does with the time, but the way he shows up and how he is. Because when you meet him, he just, he takes you along with his energy and he's the most wonderful person to hang around with. So um, that is something that we are all incredibly lucky to have um, today with us in the room. And he actually started at three o'clock this morning. So that just gives you a slight indicator of how much he uses his time and what he does with it, which is pretty incredible if you ask me. And I'm watching him smiling as I'm talking because I don't know what's going on in his mind, but that's who he is all the time. Let's watch since passion to... Um, for an expertise in self-management and productivity has earned him the nickname the Time Lord and it comes with over 30 years of experience as a trainer, speaker, facilitator and coach in self-management, motivation and communication. He's the author of Get More Time and Creating Success Coaching and he is just going to wow you. I am sure that like me you are looking forward to listening to him share how each of us can get more time because Clearly, that is something that is running out for all of us. So no matter how old you are, it's running out. So um, with that, over to you, Les. And what we'll do is we will come back. Um, we'll let Les speak to us. He'll share. Then we'll do some insights. And we'll close up and uh, see you all after that. All right, Les, over to you. I've already hit the the uh, the button. Let's go. Overcoming the time crunch crisis, or another way of saying it is get back an hour in every day. And a little bit about me so that you know why spend the time, why actually pay attention. I've been speaking and training for over 30 years. And before I was a speaker and trainer, I did this thing called Insight Seminars. And I did it in Sydney, where I spent 30 years and the seminar itself changed my life. I was able to, it was a personal development seminar and the trainer uh, that I had wrote a book, a very famous book called Getting Things Done. His name is David Allen and the GTD methodology is worldwide and he trained me. So from there, I was able to then come away, create my company and I work with big companies and small, some of the big companies you know, like Australia Post and Combank and RMIT and Taz Uni, uh, Deacon Uni, Rip Curl, Cats, Hello World. So all the way from the top end of town to the bottom can be one to one through to a couple of hundred people at a time. And obviously it's productivity and time management, but I have a background in sales, customer service, leadership and communication. It's all about what makes people tick. So my invitation for you today is to really, this isn't about me, it's about you. So I'll do a little bit more about me, but take lots of notes because I know this stuff works. I'm actually not here for me. I'm here for you. So take notes, come up with some questions and we'll handle them at the end. Oh, I wrote a book, Get Back an Hour and Every Day. And that was really well received. It put me on the Today Show with Carl and Georgie. And that was a lot of fun. That was a hoot. Uh, that's my book in his hand. Uh, I've written for Inside Small Business quite a bit. And the editor there and I are good mates. Um, so that's a little bit about me. But in regards to you, which ones of these resonate with you? Self-overload, procrastination, constant interruption, clutter and paperwork, indecision, unproductive communication, overwhelm, messy desk, distraction. There's never a time that I've had someone say none of those. Always someone will say, yep, got that, got that. And I've had lots of people say I've got all of that going on. So what is it for you? Which one is it for you? And if I had the time, I'd take you through the whole lot because this is my program where you're looking at an audit and systems and planning and self-care and vision and purpose and email and paperwork, accountability, productivity, comfort zone, leadership, discipline, continuous improvement. But not seeing we've got 30 minutes, what I can do in 30 minutes is look at clarity and planning, email and paperwork, systems and productivity hacks. And JR says that I kind of bring an energy and today will be very rapid fire. It's, I'm going to give you the whole nine yards. I'm going to give you it all to you so that it swamps over you and you can pick out the bits that work for you. Is that okay? So really, 
This is about you grabbing something and running with it, but you'll need to take notes. All right. Thomas Leonard said this thing of the problems that we have, lack of boundaries, insufficient language, and incompletions. And I'm going to talk about incompletions because I found it to be one of the linchpins of how to get people unstuck and into creating more time in their day. David Allen gave me this cycle. And the cycle of productivity starts as an idea that you then start. And from start, you then continue, continue, then finish, finish, then acknowledge. If that cycle is broken in any place, it creates an incompletion. So given that, some examples would be things like piles of paper on a desk, expense reconciliation, stalled project, broken promises, unreturned calls, emails, cluttered email inbox, unscheduled meetings. Sound familiar? And the price that you pay for that is stuff like guilt, resentment, lack of motivation, lethargy, task avoidance, anger, bitterness, confusion, stress, anxiety, lack of innovation. And that's not what you're after. What you're after is the flip side of that. More energy, more power, more achievement, more motivation, satisfaction, creativity, goal attainment, ability to move forward, sense of control. I just want to control back in my life, Les. Clarity, focus, peace, empowerment, and freedom. They're the rewards that come from getting a handle on productivity and time management. So really quickly, I'm just going to do an overview of the thing that I call the trigger list in which you do a mind sweep and get it out of your head down onto paper. All those things that are either an idea that you haven't started, what you've started and not continue, continue, not finish, finish, not acknowledge. And when I go through it in depth, and if you want to, you can just hit me up at the end and I'll, I'll send you the link that you can download the, the long version of this. You do both work and home, the incompletions at home, as well as the incompletions at work. Because I worked with one lady and she said, Oh, it works fine. I said, what about that pile? She said, oh, that's home. Oh, that's where I need to work. So just an overview. I'm not going to go in depth, but things in completion, like what projects have you got that you've started but not completed or projects that need to be started? What's on your desk? What's around your desk? What's on the floor? Messy desk drawer. Any incompletions around people or communications? Anything around meetings that need to be set, scheduled? planning, long-term planning, short-term planning, sales and marketing. And that list, I normally spend about 10, 15 minutes just on that list alone. And then you would be able to, you can bring some of those to mind. Bring some of those to mind. It's like, yeah, I've got an incompletion there. Yep, yeah, I've got that idea. Yeah, I must do that, whatever. And then from there, go home. Go on, go home. So from the home list, exactly the same thing happens. Are there projects that you've started and not completed? Are there promises you've made to other people at home that you haven't acted on, you haven't um, followed through with? Are there things you've borrowed and not given back? Have you things that you've loaned out that haven't come back? They're incompletions. Anything around the house, and there's quite a large one to do around the house, so hit me up for that link. Anything around health and fitness that's incomplete? Anything around finances that's incomplete? So once you do that, you get it out of your head, down onto paper. When I spend 10 or 15 minutes on it, the normal thing that happens is people say, thanks, Les. I'm in overwhelm now. I was fine when I walked in here, and now I feel like crap. It's like, well, wait a minute. I actually didn't do it to you. All I did was drain the swamp. All I did was bring to mind those things that were already sitting on your shoulder and in your unconscious, they go, what about me? What about me? What about me? What about me? And you've taken it from the back of your head out and down onto paper. So those things are already there. And I'm not going to leave you there. So the, the two keys to do with this, first is categorize. So are there things on your list? JR, JR, trust me, it's been on the list for 12 years. Are you going to do it? Why don't you just delete it? Oh, yes, but I really like it, Les. No, I think you need to let it go. So are there things on the list that you need to delete so you can get rid of some? And then there are less than two-minute jobs. Then there are single action items, projects, and non-business critical. The less than two minutes, you're getting stuff done really quickly. The single action items are more than two minutes and not a project, and projects are more than one action. 
The non-business critical is stuff like, well, I want to go to Egypt or I want to go to Japan or I want to take a combi van up the east coast of Australia. That's not today, this week, this month, actually not this year. It's down the track and you take it out of your head, put it on a piece of paper. When you do your planning, you come to that and add those things in. So categorize is one thing. And then that stuff that you got out of your head down on the paper, you can put in context. Are there things that you do in a context of home? Therefore, when you're at work, and again, a lot of us work from home, but the differentiation between working at home and being at work, or maybe it's an incompletion with a client as a context. We've all got them called the shopping list at the supermarket, at the chemist, or at Bunnings, whatever it might be. So contextualize your list so it becomes when I get to that context or that place, I'll be able to do that action. The other thing that happens is once you get it out of your head, down into a piece of paper, the question on the table is this, where does that piece of paper live? And I say it needs to live in what is called a trusted system. And I don't mind if it's paper-based or app-based. It doesn't matter to me. But it's got to work for you. And I have had situations where a woman, an executive, turned to me and she said, are you giving me permission to go back to paper? Uh-huh. She said, oh, thank goodness these apps don't work for me. So don't get stuck in a methodology that doesn't work. Try something else. So she went out, bought herself a paper planner, came back, and her productivity went through the roof. Why? Because she was doing what worked for her. I'm just going to do a real quick overview of what a paper-based planner would look like, and then I'll do something on app-based as well. So the secret of your success is determined by your daily agenda. That is my daily planner. It has my appointments on it, my tasks, and on the right-hand side are some notes that I make whilst through the day. So I can see exactly what's coming up and the tasks I need to do. One of the keys that I say to people is stop putting 40 things on your task list. You're not going to get them done and you get resentful because you have to transfer them over every time. Put everything on a separate list and only bring three to five major things onto your task list per day. If you get them done, then great, bring some more in. But don't think you have the time or the energy to do 40, unless they're 42-minute jobs. Not 42 minutes, but 42-minute jobs. The other one on tasks is doing A's and B's. Prioritization is really simple. It's either an A or a B. An A is if it doesn't get done, the, round, the brown smelly stuff is going to hit the round twirly thing. And no one wants the shit to hit the fan, so get it done. Things like if you don't get a contract done, you lose a client or you lose money or you lose reputation. That's an A. Not paying a bill, costing extra $150, that's an A. Everything else is a B. Will some of the Bs turn into As tomorrow? Yes, they will. Is that okay? Yes, because do what you need to do today. Let tomorrow be tomorrow. So prioritization, very simple, but very powerful. Now, the back of my planner has areas of responsibility. And these are some areas of mine. So you've got get more time. You've got invoicing, marketing, entrepreneurs, Geelong, fitness, personal, finance, talk e-commerce and tourism, and church, Kadenia. If you put them all together, they look like that. They are the tabs in the back of my planner. Yours are yours. And the things that are, that are relevant for all of us are those top ones on the right-hand side, which is finance, personal, and fitness. That should be on everyone's. But the thing about having an inner planner, I can go to any meeting and take notes and it's in one place. It's in a trusted system. So you can ask me questions about meetings and it'll be in one place. I can brainstorm, it's in one place. All my notes are in one place. So maybe you use something like that. Maybe you don't, maybe you'd like to. Um, people ask me, how do I do those areas of responsibility? I just do a mind map. You put areas of responsibility in the middle and that's a, a latest one for me. You've got get more time, creating success coaching, BBG, writing, fitness, finance, personal, connect group and marketing. They are the relevancy right now. And I did that uh, just as a mind map. And you can do it whether it's freehand or in a particular uh, application. So what are your areas of responsibility? Have you segmented them? Because 15 to 20 doesn't work. That's where overwhelm comes in. All right. And there are those people that say, oh, Les, we've moved on from paper. We're an app person now. And I go, that's fine too. You can be an app person. What are you using? Any do? 
Asana, send Trello, easy note, one note, Google Keep, Trello, remember the milk, Evernote, OmniFocus, to do us things. <sighs> oh, so many apps. Which one works? The one that you work. The one that you work will work, but you've got to work it. There is no perfect app. There just isn't. I've not come across one. One that works for a lot of people is OneNote. Why? Because it resembles a planner where you've got a, a notebook at the top there and they're on the left-hand side. The tabs of that notebook are at the top of the screen and the pages of that notebook are on the right-hand side. So if you look at mine, it would look something like this. This is my work notebook. And you've got the top there, get more time, my contract with Deakin University, marketing, writing, BBG. Ha <laughs> ha. Antonio Seeds, my wife's book, has been made into a film, mentoring, localized. And those pages on the right hand side relate to the top with get more time. So that's a way of doing a planner type, a segmentation of work in an app. Now, one of the biggest killers in a lot of people is email and paperwork. It's like, oh, so tough. Well, let me give you an example. Dale came to a public seminar and he did the, the workshop and he came up to me and said, oh, I think I need a one-on-one -on -one session. So ended up at his office. I said, what's the problem? He said, come over here. And he launched his computer and there was his emails. There were 6,000 emails in his inbox. I said, ah, oh, I see your problem. How many of those, Dale, are relevant? He said, about 20. I said, mm -hmm, okay. 5,980 are sitting there doing nothing. I want you to create another folder and take them out and put them in that folder. Now, you're not deleting them. You're just taking them out of your eyesight. And when he'd done that and they were in another folder, call the folder Demilitarized Zone or 2022, whatever it might be, but get them out into that folder. He was left with 20 emails. He went, oh, I can do 20 emails. And he got to the end of the day and was able to get to this thing called Inbox Zero. The two people do Inbox Zero, Merlin Mann and David Allen. You can look them, look it up. It's a, a methodology of getting to inbox being zero emails, either daily or weekly. And it works because it enables you to have a clean deck. So as an email drops in, you've got one of the four Ds, and I'm about to explain that to you. So those four Ds do dump, delegate, and decide when. It takes leadership. As an email comes in, do I do it within two minutes? Therefore, just do it. Do I delete it? The most underused key on the keyboard is the delete key. Delegate it to somebody and delegate it nicely with clear outcomes and timeframes. Or do I decide when and put it in my calendar with a, probably an alarm to go, hmm, wait a minute. I've got an appointment with myself to do that email. So put it in your planner so that you have a little reminder because if you don't act on the reminder, it becomes another incompletion. And you can do the same with paperwork. Just do dump, delegate, decide when, when, when a piece of paper comes across your desk. Very simple, but very powerful when it comes to email. All right, now on the back end, we are purling along. This is awesome. I'm going to give you these. These, again, are very tiny, very simple tricks and tips and techniques that you can put in to create more time for yourself. And the I first one is similar to what we just, yep. Les, can I just interrupt? Just going back to you, you like with your delegate and um, like saying, start telling the person whatever it's got to do, can't that generally take or can that take more than the two minutes so you're kind of double handling it anyway? Yeah, sense? I'm not talking about delegating two-minute jobs. I'm talking about delegating tasks and, and projects that are longer than two minutes. Yeah, but by the time you explain it, sometimes it can be, oh, no, I get it. Sorry. Don't worry. Ignore yeah, me. And, and I, no, I understand the concern, but you're looking at leverage. So those things that you can do yourself, then the explanation and that not, it cancels each other out, therefore do it yourself. However, yeah. there are times when you are delegating a project and being a project is going to take three or four hours. It's not yours anyway, so delegate it off to somebody so you're freeing up your time. Sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. So handle each piece of paper once. is similar to a piece of paper or an email. Don't pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. Same with an email. Don't open and close it, open and close it, open and close it. Be the decision maker, be the leader. And for you, 
make a decision. Either do dump delegate or decide when. Don't use scraps of paper. Les, are you against post-it notes? No, love my post-it notes, but where do they live? In my trusted system. They don't live on my desk, on my computer, or on my screen. Because you know, you've heard of those other people that get out there and they go, wait a minute, that's on a post-it note on my desk and I don't know what it says. Ouch. So don't use scraps of paper. Have it in a trusted system. Don't use post-it notes unless they are living in your trusted system. Interruptions. How do you handle interruptions, Les? I'm so glad you asked. And this is about people that suck your time, people that take time away from you. Hey, JR, have you got five minutes? And 20 minutes later, they're actually going, no, 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 no. And you go, I didn't have time for this. So the way to handle interruptions are to use the word no. And you don't need to hit them with a no. You can say things like, that doesn't work for me right now. Can we do it at three? Uh, that's a really good idea. I think we should spend time on it. Can we do it tomorrow? Or you can just check it out and go, I've got an A. You're saying you've got an A. What is it? You find out that their A trumps your A. It's like, okay, let's take time on that right now. But most of the time, they are just wanting stuff that's urgent for them, but not urgent for you. It may be important, but it needs to be done at, a, at another time. So no is a very powerful tool. Planning, plan each day the day before. One of the last things you do prior to leaving your desk of a nighttime is check out what you're doing tomorrow. So rather than get there and go, where's the breakfast, JR? You go, leaving the desk. Oh, JR, have you ordered that breakfast? JR goes, no, it's not mine, Liz, it's yours. I go, I better ring him because I haven't. And I'm able to capture it so that when we get there, there's breakfast as opposed to nothing. Meditation, prayer, or time alone each day. You're a human being, not a human doing. So look, some of you meditate and that's great. Some of you pray and that's great. Uh, it's not what you do. It's giving yourself the option of having that time out. You need to have some time where you can turn the computer off that is your brain and wind it down and then wind it back up again. And it just helps. Tackle the most demanding tasks, the most productive time. Are you a morning person or an afternoon person? If you're a morning person, then get your thinking tasks done in the, in the morning. How do you know if you're a morning person? You're like, you're like me and jump in and go, woohoo, let's go. Come on. It's Watson Wednesday or Trivic Thursday or Fabulous Friday. The afternoon person walks in and goes, shut up. I have not had three cups of coffee. Barista or instant, doesn't matter. I just haven't had my coffee. So afternoon person, that takes a little while to get the thinking going. There's nothing wrong with either one. It's just a matter of if you're going to do thinking, do it in the time that works for you. Don't trust your memory, write it down. The brain's a great place to have an idea, not a good place to keep it. So stop this thing of I know everything and I can retain it in my head. Because as soon as you take it out of your head down onto paper, you free up all of that creative energy to, to move into areas that you want and be more creative, be more productive, have more enjoyment. Know the economics of a task. The economics of a task is don't spend $1,000 on a $100 task. Don't spend $100 on a $10 task. Don't spend $10 on a $1 task. Pareto's principle. Leverage. Can you do certain things to get a bigger result? So make sure that you're spending time on the, on the uh, tasks that are going to give you leverage. I call it paper clips. Come out of the paper clips. Yeah, but I like my paper. No, I understand. And they're colorful and they're lovely, but they're not getting you the results that you're after. So if there are tasks that you can delegate, then delegate them. So you can focus on the $100 and $200 an hour tasks that you are, are most skilled to do. Duke Ellington said, I don't need time, I need a deadline. And uh, that key is set a deadline. How is it that I got this book called Get Back an Hour Every Day into print? I was in the room next door. And the person in front of me, I was with my wife, and the person in front of me that I was coaching said, you know, you've got enough to write a book. And I went, no, I don't. My wife hit me. She said, yes, you do. 
I went, okay. And I move in circles where you don't um, sit back, you sit forward when someone gives you a challenge. I said, okay, so in 12 months, I'll have a manuscript. And 12 months later, I had a manuscript. And six months after that, I had a fully fledged book and ended up on the Today Show. How? I set a deadline. So a lot of the reasons you have the incompletions is because you haven't set deadlines on those tasks. So maybe you can go back and say, what can I get done by the end of today? What can I get done by the end of uh, tomorrow? What can I get done by the end of next week, end of the month, end of the quarter? Meetings. Start your meetings on time. Finish your meetings on time and have an agenda. I do a big uh, module on this in my program because it takes a lot of energy with people. It's a lot of wasted time as people come in late and people don't leave on time. It's like, oh, I've got another meeting to go to. You lose people, particularly if you don't have an agenda. So start your meetings on time, finish your meetings on time, have an agenda. And the last one is clean up from last week, the weekly review. It's, a, it's a, just a really simple one, but very powerful, where if you're on your own, your weekly review can look like what worked this week, what didn't work this week, and what can I do better going forward? If you're in a team, you can do that. I actually have a dashboard where I look at these things. So income, the bank balances, what I've invoiced, the outstanding invoices, proposals, et cetera, et cetera. And it works for me because I can share that with my wife, my business partner, and I can go, here's what happened this week. And she doesn't even need to be in the office, but she, I'm being accountable with this dashboard. My weekly review enables me to see what's happened. And also we then swap diaries and I'll look at her diary and so what's coming up. She'll look at my diary and we'll talk about the things that are coming up and what we need to prep for. So there's the weekly review. We are on track. So I can, again, I can do a three-hour session, and I think I got through that in about 16 minutes. Um, I've got a couple more things. I want to give you something at the end here, um, but make sure you, you've got those questions because um, I will answer that as we come off. Uh, just what do you, if you did get back an hour and every day, what do you want to do with it? Is it to have more joy or balance and peace, or is it happiness, or maybe... It's just world domination. Because the thing that I wanted to talk to you about was I do have a program. It's called the Creating Success Program. And success is very individual. So, so when you're looking at coaching, a good coach can change a game and a great coach can change a life. It's all about better systems, faster execution, and more profit to make business easy. Could be making sales easy, making service easy making profits easy, whatever it might be. So it takes it through the 12 modules from audit systems, planning, marketing, sales, email and paperwork, customer service, productivity, self-care, leadership, discipline, and Kaizen, which is continuous improvement. And it's a three-month program that has accountability and support. You get a clarity session with me, weekly coaching sessions, or twice weekly if you choose. And there's daily content in an online platform with over 90 six lessons explored, discussed, and appropriately actioned. So the 12 modules are there. And just to give you, a, each of them are supported by video content. It's not just written. So the 96 videos. And there's one on email and paperwork. There's another one on productivity. It's about 13 in there. And there's one on leadership. It's got 14 in there on leadership, which is each of them are about two, two or three minutes each. Some of them are a little longer but um, they're very digestible. So just to talk to you a little bit about it, and then I'll, I'll wrap up. Three-month program. If you were to have the one-to-one, it'd be 250 with me. Each session is about $100. There's 1,300 over the three months. The 96 lessons of 50 bucks a pop would be 4,795. If you add it all up, it's over six grand. It's on the website as five grand, but as a BBG, and I gave this the other day when JR was in the room. For BBG, it's only 500 bucks. So it's a 90% discount. And, and JR hits me over the head and goes, Les, you can't do that. You can't give it away for 90% discount. I said, JR, I can do whatever I like. So if you'd like to take me up on it, I'm happy to, uh, to talk to you about it. If you've got a phone, you can bring your phone out and you can take like your photo of that and then go to the website 
and fill in your details because we can have a conversation. So if that set, triggers inside of you, I'd like more to know more. I'd like to have a conversation as to uh, what it is, or I'd like to take you up on that 90% discount. I think we should work together.